polynomial. So I'm not going to go over that. We've seen the word operator, <coughs> which is basically it's a, you can think of it as a function that eats functions and gives you other functions. So our derivative is an operator. So we'll start with that word, operator. Basically a function that goes from functions, its domain is some functions, and its range is other functions. <coughs> now I'm using the word some functions because functions that are not differentiable, obviously you cannot apply a differential operator to them. So some functions. Um, and range is some other functions. Now all the functions we're going to look at are going to be differentiable and generally their derivatives will also be differentiable as well. So that's what an operator is. So <coughs> we're going to have our differentiable operator Differential operator, if I keep writing ddx, 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 it's going to take forever. So what we're going to do is use the letter capital D. It's going to save us a lot of writing. And you might be thinking, well, why don't we just use the letter lowercase d? Uh, let me show you really briefly why, why we don't use lowercase d. Lowercase d is an operator. Uh, it's just not the operator we want to use here. You've used lowercase d operator before. Let's do a really fast uh, u substitution. Maybe the easiest one I think of is x squared. So you apply this operator normally, you get du dx equals 2x and du equals 2x dx. So this is all calc, really calc 1 stuff right there. So that's nothing impressive. Uh, <coughs> I didn't use d as an operator here, I used d dx as an operator. I could use just the operator lowercase d, and what that would look like so the derivative of u is 1, but you're going to get a du. Derivative of x squared is 2x, but you also get a dx. So technically you can apply the lowercase um, differential operator right here. So that's not the one I want to apply. I want to apply this operator right here. I just don't want, I want to be lazy and not write it like that. So that's why we're going to use the capital D right there. So now that's out of the way. Uh, so how do we turn these into polynomials? So we'll look at the word polynomial now. So that's polynomial in D. So the variable, it's not really a variable, but it looks like a variable, will now be the operator D. So it's a polynomial of the letter D. So that's one operator. Let's do another operator. Oh, it's too complicated. Let's be lazy and go. Let's just do a d squared minus 1. Keep it a little, little bit easier. Uh, so we'll call that p1 and we'll call it p2. I'll make up some other easy polynomial. Let's do uh, just regular d plus 2. That's pretty easy. All right, so I'm just writing down two polynomials in the variable d or the operator d. So first example, I want to figure out what is p1 plus p2. So just add together the two polynomials. You've done this lots and lots of times. So 
So there is the two polynomials added together. So everything I'm going to talk about at the beginning of class can be super simple. You're not going to learn very much. At the beginning, we're just laying out some just rules of how to do these operations. So I can also multiply polynomials by numbers. So I can do six times this polynomial. And you multiply just the same way you multiplied before. So that's nothing new. So you can add two polynomials together. You can multiply polynomials by constants. And another uh, property of the differential operator So now <clears throat> we're just going to look at properties of this operator. So you could think of this as the identity operator. Or the, it's a degree one polynomial with a y-intercept <coughs> of zero. But just think of it as the d operator. And let's do alpha f of x plus beta g of x. So these are calc 1 rules. How do I apply a derivative to alpha times a function plus beta times another function? Or alpha and beta are constants. Well, you can just do that. Um, so I get the sum rule and the constant multiple rule. And I'm going to apply both at the same time. So we got alpha d f of x, and I'm going to wrap up an extra parentheses just so you see the operator d is just uh, going to operate on the f function, not on anything else after it. So that's calc 1 rule right there. Now for uh, what is the vocabulary word for functions that have this property? It is an associative. Mm, no. So it has this nice algebraic property. So I can multiply by constants and I can add. So we call this a linear operator from linear algebra. So D is a linear operator. Right? That's familiar? If you took linear algebra, this is uh, what a linear operator is. All right, so the derivative operator is a linear operator. What about uh, d squared? Let's apply d squared to the same thing and see what we get. <coughs> and I'm going to be lazy and not write of x of x. So if this is derivative of a derivative, so of course d squared is dd. And now I'm going to use the uh, first, the rule that I just wrote down above. So I'm going to distribute the first derivative across. So this is d of alpha df plus beta <laughs> dg. And now I get to apply the second derivative operator. <coughs> and still linear operator, so it's going to look like alpha ddf plus beta d, d, g, and of course those are d squared.
Now there was nothing specific about the second power that wouldn't work on all the higher powers. So this will work if I use cubed, third, or uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh powers. So if dn of this would be alpha dn f plus beta dn g, written out like that. Is the f inside the parentheses and the g outside the parentheses? Oh, no. That. Oh. Technically, I think technically order of operations, you'd be okay because they operate on what's to the right. And because it wasn't, you know, G times H, I, it would be okay to write it like this, but it would be misleading. All right, so I can apply n derivatives, and I still get that nice linear property right there. Let's get a little crazier, and let's go alpha, beta. <coughs> let's go gamma d So gamma is another number. You know, let me just use the letter C. You'll probably like that better. All right. So C is a number. Real number. So <clears throat> this operator right here, it's a number times ddx. So what you do, d operates on what's to the right. So d is going to go first, do its thing, and then whatever you get, you multiply by c. So the way this operation works, so d operates to its right. So this is going to be c times d alpha f plus beta g, which is c times alpha df plus beta dg. And now I can distribute my constant c, just multiplying across the addition. Distributive property, c alpha df plus c beta dg. And just change the order, the c and the alpha and the c and the beta. That's just scalar multiplication. and then reassociate like this. So what this tells us is scalar multiples of derivative operators are still linear operators. So any questions on that idea? So we got scalar multiples of linear operators or linear op or operators. Wouldn't it be nice if linear combinations of linear operators were linear operators? We're halfway there. We just got to look at addition. So we got scalar multiples. We'll just look at addition. So let's go with d to the n plus d to the m. The reason why I don't want to just look at d plus d, that's just 2 times d. So an operator operates on what's to the right. So the only thing I know right now this is it's going to operate on what's to the right, and we're going to use the sum rule right here. Actually, how do I want to distribute this? No, I would be assuming it's a linear operator doing it like that. Ah. 
Uh, so we have to decide what does this mean. So this means uh, find the m derivative, find the n derivative, and add those two together. So this is dm of alpha f plus beta g plus dn of alpha f plus beta g. And we saw both of these before. That's alpha dm f plus beta dm g plus alpha dnf plus beta dng. And now I want to regroup things. So before they were grouped up like this, I want to group up by, I want to put the f terms together and the g terms together instead of grouping up by the powers of d. So I'm going to regroup. So we'll go with our f functions first, alpha m dmf plus alpha dnf plus beta dmg plus beta dng. So I just use the community property of addition right there just to reorder stuff. And finally, I can, the reason I did this I want to rewrite this so we can factor alpha out. Factor beta out. So this is the M the m derivative plus the n derivative of f right here. So this is the m derivative plus the n derivative of g. So this tells us that the <coughs> sum of linear operators is a linear operator. So we can say that linear operators are a vector space if we want to get super fancy. That means it's closed under addition and scalar multiplication. That's what it takes to be a vector space. Or maybe a better way to say it, the, a linear combination of linear operators is a linear operator. Now, if you don't know any calculus, this sentence would seem true as well. Linear combination of linear stuff should be linear stuff, basically. But we just proved this right here. So let's do a computation. Remember, operators operate on what's to the right. 
So are we taking derivative of 2x squared, or are we going to be taking derivative e to the 3x? E to the 3x. E to the 3x. And we're going to do so carefully. So this operator operates on e to the 3x. How does it do so? We saw before. So from this last property we wrote down, two derivative operators added together, you could apply them uh, to both functions. Or, so they're going to operate like this, 2x squared. So we have 3d squared e to the 3x plus d e to the 3x. So any questions on that first step there? All right, so go ahead and compute these derivatives. One of them is the second derivative. These derivatives should be pretty easy to compute once you get through the notation. Any questions on this derivative on the board? The calculus of what we're doing is easy. It's the polynomialness of it. That's the tricky part. So not only can we add linear combinations of linear operators, any operation that worked on polynomials will work on polynomials <coughs> of linear operators. So what type of cool stuff did we do with polynomials? We did things like factoring. We did things like multiplying, which is unfactoring. What else? Eventually, we'll do partial fractions. That was for rational functions. Uh, you can use rational zero theorem to factor. So all the cool stuff we learned about polynomials all works with polynomial operators. So polynomial products of linear operators are still linear operators. And you still get so associativity. So these are some very mathy words right here. So let's go ahead and look at an example here. So I want to show that these two are the same. Algebraically, if you FOIL those two terms, you're going to get d cubed plus 3d squared minus d squared. So that's 3 minus 1 is 2 d squared minus 3d. So algebraically, those are the same. But what I want you to do is Forget about the fact that you know those are the same thing algebraically. So forget about that fact. <coughs> Operators operate on what's to the right. So which operator goes first? The one with one underline or two underlines? Which one operates on this guy first? 
lines. Two order lines. So it operates on what's to the right. So the one that has to go first is the one that's immediately next to it. So you apply them in that order. So on the left side, you have to apply that guy first. Oh, I didn't talk about what does a plus three mean? What degree derivative is next to that that's invisible? Zero. So that means take zero derivatives or don't do anything and then multiply it by three. So constant just means multiply basically by three. So we're going to get d of this thing plus three times this thing. And just copy down d squared minus d. So 3x squared minus 1 plus 3x cubed minus 3x. So I think you can do the rest of the operations right here. So there's just really one more operation to do on the left side, and then jump over to the right side and do, uh, you can basically apply it all at one time on the right side. And hopefully you get the same thing. So go ahead and compute on both sides. So there's two ways to distribute here. One way is you can distribute the operator across all four terms. That'd be one way to do it. The other way to do it, which is probably the way you're going, especially if you're looking at me a little bit strangely, you can take all four terms and distribute that way. I don't think there's really another way to do it. You can rearrange your terms in a different order, but in terms of actually applying the operation, there's really only two ways to do it. So who went this route, the way that I have it written on the board? And then, 
So hopefully the other others who don't have your hands up went the other way, the distribute the complete operator across all four terms. That would be the other reason. I guess you can do it in your head and sort of write down all eight terms independently. That would be another option. But I assume most of you went this way, so that's why I went this way on the board. Now it turns out if you compute your first derivative first, that'll help you get your second derivative instead of trying to do double derivative in your head. So if you kind of pick your lowest degree derivative to find, and then use that to find your next higher derivative, you can save a little time depending on what's, what's happening. Messed up the rest of it too. 17 minus 6, 12. So plus 6 plus 3 is plus 9. There we go. All right. So any questions about this right here? All right. So now we're going to run back to the other side. So I wasn't really sure that these were equal. I mean, they're certain in my notes, but we're trying to show they're equal. So just like proving any identity you're doing, we just operate on one side, got to somewhere, and now we're going to operate on the other side. <coughs> well, I told you to do it differently in pre-calculus class. Start on one side and get to the other side. But we're doing the cheating way where we're going backwards on one side, basically. Well, you're not in pre-calculus anymore, so you don't have to follow those rules. <coughs> All right, so it's your choice how to apply this. I would probably... Keep that as one chunk and go this way. So I would probably go this route. So d cubed of this plus 2d squared of this minus 3d of this. And then you compute your first derivative first, then your second derivative, then your third derivative. And you should be able to knock them out relatively quickly. So spend an extra 10 seconds figuring out the fastest way to do it, and then do it that way, instead of just sort of applying things blindly. So if you find this kind of stuff exciting, you should probably major in math. Strongly recommend that. All right, so we can treat differential operators like they're polynomials. That's what we just showed. We can multiply differential operators the way we multiply polynomials. Uh, or we can apply them independently. Just apply the first one and apply the second one. There are other properties. Let's see. I'll just write down some of these properties. So if we combine three polynomials in this way, a polynomial times the sum of two other polynomials just the regular algebraic properties. This is P1D 
P2D plus P1D, P3D, like that. So they uh, have the distributive property. So P1, I'll just write a generic polynomial, an nth degree. All of you have passed algebra class, so fundamental theorem of algebra. What is fundamental theorem of algebra? So while we're forgetting fundamental theorems, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. I'm not personally an arithmetic expert, but fundamental theorem of arithmetic is every integer, uh, positive integer can be factored one way uh, using primes. So fundamental theorem of algebra says, it's also about factoring, and it says every polynomial can be factored, but specifically not necessarily over the real numbers, but always you can factor over the complex numbers all the way down. So this polynomial, or any polynomial, can be completely factored over the, oh, not real numbers, over the complex numbers. So every polynomial can factor into first degree terms. Not necessarily over the real numbers, but definitely over complex numbers. So you could write P1 of D, get the first coefficient out, and then it's gonna be all linear coefficients, or linear uh, terms after this, so D minus R1, d minus r2 times, times, times. where these numbers are zeros of P1 of D. Is polynomial multiplication commutative? Can I change the order if I multiply two polynomials? Does it matter which one was written first and which one was written second? It doesn't matter. So the answer is yes. So what that means is P1 of D, P2 of D is the same thing as P2 times P1. And of course, uh, addition is very obviously commutative. Yeah, so you can multiply P1 times P2 is the same as P2 times P1. And also, so is addition. So we'll see some more cool properties tomorrow. And then we'll do the exponential shift theorem.